My husband lied, so I cut him out completely. I sat in the dark, the cold glow of the street lamp outside casting shadows through the window blinds. My hands were still trembling, clutching the edges of the wooden dining table as if holding onto something tangible would anchor me in place. The silence in the room was suffocating. It felt as though the air had thickened, heavy with the weight of a truth I had tried for so long to ignore. Ethan had lied to me. My husband, the man I had trusted with every vulnerable part of myself, had looked me in the eye countless times, promising love, loyalty, and honesty. And yet, he had lied. I had found the text messages that afternoon, a string of words that seemed so innocuous at first. But the further I scrolled, the more obvious it became. A series of brief exchanges between him and a woman I didn't recognize, her name buried in his phone under a fake one a lie of its own. He had carefully concealed his betrayal, using her as a mirror for his hidden desires and secrets. Every word I read chipped away at the love I had clung to for so long. I thought I knew him. I thought we were better than this. But every message, every cryptic I can't wait to see you or I miss you made me question everything we had built together. The silence was shattered by the sound of the door opening. Ethan stepped into the house, oblivious to the tempest raging inside me. He tossed his keys on the counter and smiled, the same smile that had always made me feel safe. But now, that smile felt hollow, twisted. How was your day? He asked casually, slipping off his jacket and hanging it by the door. I didn't answer. My voice was stuck somewhere between the knot in my throat and the rage simmering in my chest. His footsteps echoed as he walked toward me, concern flickering across his face when he noticed the unease in my expression. Hey, are you okay? I could have screamed. I could have hurled accusations and demanded answers. But something inside me cracked, and instead of an outburst, my response came out quiet, deadly. How long? Ethan stopped in his tracks, confusion creasing his brow. What do you mean? How long have you been lying to me? His face paled, and the room filled with a suffocating tension. I watched as he pieced together what I meant, and when the realization hit, his eyes darted to the side, guilt etched into every line of his face. I stood, my legs unsteady but my resolve stronger than it had ever been. Don't bother lying again. I saw the messages. Silence. He didn't even try to deny it. Instead, his shoulders slumped, and he sank into the chair across from me. I didn't mean for it to happen. Those words. As if betrayal could be accidental, as if lies could somehow spill from his mouth without his consent. The anger flared again, but beneath it, something else lingered in aching sadness, a realization that the man I had once loved was not the man sitting in front of me. What was it? I asked, my voice cracking. What wasn't enough? What did you need from her that you couldn't find in me? Ethan's hands tightened into fists on the table. It's not like that, Liv. It wasn't about you. Don't you dare say that, I snapped. Don't pretend this was some random mistake. You made a choice. You chose to lie. You chose her. His eyes filled with desperation. I love you, Liv. I still love you. This, it doesn't change that. I laughed, a bitter, hollow sound that didn't feel like mine. You think love is enough after this? Do you even know what love is? The tears finally came, hot and unstoppable. I didn't want to cry in front of him. I didn't want him to see just how much his betrayal had torn me apart. But there was no holding back the flood. Ethan reached for me, but I recoiled, the thought of his touch suddenly repulsive. Don't. Just, don't. I wiped my eyes and took a step back, forcing myself to breathe through the anguish. I can't do this anymore, Ethan. I can't be in a marriage built on lies. I'll fix it, he pleaded. I swear, Liv. I'll do anything to fix this. But could he? Could anything ever repair the damage he had done? Could I ever trust him again? I left him there in the kitchen, the weight of his betrayal pressing down on me with every step I took toward our bedroom. The bed we had shared, the memories we had made in this house all of it now felt like a farce, a cruel joke played on the woman who believed in forever. I didn't sleep that night. I couldn't. My mind was a whirlwind of emotions rage, sorrow, disbelief. Every time I closed my eyes, I saw them together, laughing, touching, sharing moments that should have been ours. It was a betrayal that cut deeper than just infidelity. It was the loss of the man I thought I knew, the erasure of the life we had planned. By morning, I had made a decision. I was going to cut him out of my life, completely. No more pretending. No more hoping for things to go back to the way they were. I packed a bag and left while he was still asleep, the sunrise casting a cold light on the world outside. I didn't leave a note. There was nothing left to say. The first few weeks after I left Ethan felt like living in a fog. My mind was numb, my emotions dull and disconnected. I went through the motions work, sleep, repeat without truly feeling anything. 
The anger had faded, leaving behind a hollow ache that gnawed at me constantly. I wasn't sure if I had made the right decision. I had walked away, cut him out, but part of me still ached for the life we had shared. It wasn't just Ethan I had lost it was the future we had planned together, the dreams we had built over the years. That was when Sophie came into my life. She was a colleague, someone I had worked with for years but never really connected with until after I left Ethan. She had been through something similar a betrayal, a broken marriage and when she found out what had happened, she reached out. Sophie became my lifeline. She understood the pain I was in, the confusion, the bitterness that nodded me every time I thought about what Ethan had done. She didn't push me to forgive or to move on. She simply listened, offering quiet support and gentle encouragement when I needed it most. But even with her friendship, the rage still simmered beneath the surface. It wasn't enough just to walk away. Part of me wanted to make Ethan feel the same pain he had inflicted on me. I wanted him to suffer, to understand what it felt like to be shattered by someone you trusted completely. Sophie sensed it. Revenge won't heal you, live, she said one evening as we sat in her apartment, wine glasses in hand. It'll just keep you tied to him. You'll never be free if you're still carrying all that anger. Her words hit me hard, and for the first time, I questioned the path I was on. I had cut Ethan out of my life, but had I really let him go? Or was I still clinging to the pain, letting it define me? Months passed, and my emotions began to shift. The anger that had once consumed me started to fade, replaced by a deep, soul-crushing sadness. I missed Ethan, missed the man he had been before the lies. But more than that, I missed the version of myself that had existed before the betrayal the woman who believed in love, in trust, in forever. Forgiveness was a foreign concept to me then. It felt like weakness, like letting him get away with what he had done. But the more I thought about it, the more I realized that forgiveness wasn't about him it was about me. It was about letting go of the pain that had taken root in my heart, about finding a way to move forward without being consumed by bitterness. It wasn't easy. Every step toward healing felt like a battle. But slowly, I began to find pieces of myself again. I started therapy, threw myself into new projects at work, reconnected with old friends. The more I focused on rebuilding my own life, the less power Ethan had over me. And then, one day, I saw him. It was a chance encounter he was walking out of a cafe as I was walking in. Our eyes met, and for a moment, the world stood still. He looked different tired, worn, as if the weight of his choices had finally caught up to him. But I no longer felt the burning anger I once had. Instead, I felt, free. We didn't speak. There was no need to. I walked past him, my heart lighter than it had been in months. It was over. Truly over. And in that moment, I knew I had made the right choice. I had chosen myself.